All right, welcome back guys. Uh, as we continue to go through past exam questions, what we've got today, we've got 2019 uh, question eight. So if you wanna pause and, and bring that up for yourself, you can. Otherwise, we'll sort of explain what's going on. Um, what we got, this question got set up with a, a diagram explaining a phosphate recovery test. So it was a short course phosphate recovery test. Now, you guys won't need to understand all of the aspects of the fitness testing this year, but a question like this probably gave you all the information you needed anyway, so you could have gone into this without much knowledge about it and you would get what you need. What we get told is that we're gonna do eight seven second sprints. So we're gonna sprint for seven seconds as long as we can, and we're gonna start each sprint on a 30 second cycle. So if I was sitting down to my exam paper and I just read that, I would be writing something like, uh, I'd say seven on, 23 off. I might just jot that down for myself on, on my piece of paper. Right, it's seven second max sprint and then a 23 second recovery each time. All right, so that's set. Now what happens, the athletes start from here, they sprint, uh, seven seconds gets called and we're counting, actually, yeah, we're going this way, we're counting how many of these 10 cones we get past. All right, that's how the test works. So then you would have your S, you'd start the second one from this end, go again, and now you'd be counting these cones. So we don't need to know too much about that, but the way we score it is we count how many cones we made it past. So in the first sprint, the athlete got past eight cones in the seven second. They had their recovery, they go again. Second sprint, they got past seven cones. So we had a slight drop off. Third sprint, got past six cones. Five and five, four, four, three. All right. Uh, and then the way this test gets measured, we, we look at what you could have done. So eight was your best. So if we, made, if we maintained eight for all uh, eight runs, we would have got a score of 64. This athlete got a score of 42. So we're gonna say that's a drop off, 64 to 42. We'll get a percentage drop off, which is how we score it. We don't need to worry about that too much. What we're really interested in is this seven seconds sprinting, 23 seconds recovery, and the fact that the performance is dropping off. That's what we're gonna get asked about. Eight in the first gradual drop off all the way down to three. So you get that set up, you might wanna look at that on the exam, you'll be able to find that on the VCAR website if you wanna look at the exact diagram because mine's pretty rough just to serve this purpose. Uh, but we'll go across. Now, 8A was an eight mark question. All right, so it's a massive question and these questions are increasingly marked in what we call a holistic approach. So there's not necessarily eight points for you to address here. We're gonna look at the overall quality of your answer and look at if you've addressed everything. Now I've put the marking rubric up, so 8% of the state got zero. You know, people may have not turned up for the exam or not sat it. 1% got eight out of eight, all right? So it's really the top end drops away. 5% got seven. We're really heavy in this two, three, and four marks. So around that half thing, a bit less, we got sort of most of the people. It's a really good option to get up into this six, seven, eight mark range and really sort of put yourself up the list of people who did it. Now the question said, uh, basically it said the athlete's performance declined as we spoke about it. They got worse over the eight sprints. Use your knowledge of energy systems, fatigue and recovery to explain why, right? That's all we really get. Use your knowledge of your energy systems, fatigue and recovery to explain why it drops off. So it's really quite vague, it's quite open-ended. So what we wanna think about um, is all three energy systems. Now I've just put these down the bottom in red that it's the common issues that people didn't get good scores were with a generic answer. All right, so we need to we need to framework our answer around our energy system and this specific test. All right, not just don't just list the characteristics of the energy systems. All right, that would be a generic answer. We need to get specific to the test. And people ignored the aerobic energy system. Right, everyone knows it's, it's a sprint, it's a, it's a sprint test, a phosphate recovery test. I'm not going to talk about the aerobic energy system. They were the two big issues that people made. So, what we would want to say, we want to talk about why it went from eight, sorry, that's the wrong table, why we went from eight cones in the first one and we declined all the way down to three in the second one. All right, so we want to think about an energy system. We're going to first, we're going to start off, we're going to talk about the ATP PC system. And we want to talk about the rate of energy production. ATP PC system has the highest rate of energy production, explosive, which is going to allow the athletes to perform at the highest uh, possible intensity. Now, it is only a seven second sprint, that first one. So our understanding of, of around 10 seconds of PC soils, we're gonna be able to remain dominant for that entire first sprint. We have depleted a fair portion of those PC soils though. Second sprint with a bit of recovery. Again, we're gonna have really good ATP PC contributors. It's gonna be dominant for the majority of the second sprint again. Now, we, you would might go to Daniel, we ran, we ran eight cones in the first, seven in the second. So very similar. Maybe a slight PC depletion towards the end of it, causing a bit of a drop off. Now, 
our, we want to think about our recovery rates, uh, ATP, PC, we've got 30 second passive, will give us 70% replenishment. So this test only has 23 seconds in between your sprint, and that's not all passive, we've got to get back to the start. This is where we might talk about, during these recoveries, we'll be using the aerobic energy system to replenish PC stores. That is going to be occurring, but we're going to be, we're going to be uh, using out those PC stores at a faster rate than we're replenishing them, so they are going to be running out throughout this first few sprints. So what's going to happen as that occurs, we're going to start seeing increased contribution from the anaerobic glycolysis system. PC stores are depleting. Um, by the third and fourth, maybe we've got small replenishment in the recovery, but maybe the ATP PC system's only able to be dominant for the first couple of seconds of that seven second effort. So the anaerobic glycolysis system increased contribution. We now we're going to say, well, that provides energy at a slower rate when compared to the ATP PC system. Still fast, but it is slower we would expect to see some fatigue and we start to see that drop off. The third sprint's down to six cones, the fourth and the fifth down to five cones. So we've dropped off from eight at the start, we're down to five here. Now the flow on from this, as the anaerobic glycolysis system increases its contribution for longer in each sprint, we're gonna to start to see an accumulation of metabolic byproducts. We just need to be able to say that I wouldn't be going into hydronines and glycolytic enzyme at this point. This isn't the question for it. I just, an accumulation of metabolic byproducts will be inhibiting muscle function. That's enough, slowing us down. Now, again, that is gonna accumulate over the next four, five, six. So we've had our piece, we can see again, we've got this drop off continually occurring. PC stores probably depleted after the first two. We get a small replenishment with this recovery, but not enough to get through a whole seven second sprint. So this increased anaerobic glycolysis contribution through these ones, starting to get an accumulation of metabolic byproducts, inhibiting muscle function. You want to talk about during the recovery. So during that rest period, the aerobic system is trying to help us with our recovery. Replenish PC stores and also use that oxygen to clear out metabolic byproducts. That's happening each time. But we're not getting back to normal periods. We're not fully replenishing PC stores and we're not clearing out those metabolic byproducts. So the fatigue's building through each of these. By the time we get to the seventh and eighth, four and three, we're going to have been having a higher contribution from the aerobic energy system here. We will say that is going to be a slower rate of energy production, hence the slower performance. We've had that accumulation of metabolic byproducts that's uh, inhibiting muscle function as we go. So there's sort of all the points you want to hit. You want to talk about all three energy systems, right? Even though it's a sprint, there is 23 seconds of recovery with each one. So that's a good time to talk about the aerobic energy system. We want to talk about the changes in contributions from the ATP PC system to the anaerobic glycolysis system due to PC depletion and not enough time for full replenishment. We want to talk about the accumulation of metabolic byproducts causing fatigue. And we want to say that the aerobic system is going to have greater contribution towards the end due to that accumulation of metabolic byproducts. And you can imagine your acute responses are up now, your heart rate's higher than it would have been at the start. So again, it's an overall response. They're all the points we want to touch on. Avoid generic answers in questions like this. Link it to the question, the sporting example, the test, whatever it is, and don't ignore the aerobic system. All right, we need to talk about all three. All right, the next part of this question was reasonably straightforward. So 3B says, uh, at, the, at the conclusion of this phosphate recovery test, athletes will undergo an active recovery. Three, give three reasons why an active recovery will benefit these athletes. So three marks for three reasons. Uh, here's our breakdown sort of 28 at 1, 38% at 2, 23 at 3, so a bit of a spread, a few got zero there again, we don't know if they actually attempted it. Any three of these are fine, right? We're keeping our heart rate increased to increase blood flow around the body, that could be one. Thermoregulation, right, that's part of that, increasing heart rate, blood flow, increased cardiac output will allow us to keep that redistribution of blood flow and help us return back to a normal temperature in a better way. Uh, venous pooling, if you've ever been on a long haul flight, you might have got off with puffy feet, puffy ankles as the blood got stuck, pulls down in the veins, lower blood pressure in the veins and arteries, gravity tries to hold the blood down and it's not helping return it, so keeping that active recovery will help us avoid that venous pooling. I think if we have venous pooling, if your blood's not circulating, it means we're not clearing out byproducts, so we'll get to that as well. Skeletal muscle pump, uh, we said lower blood pressure in the veins. While those muscles contract, relax, it helps put pressure on the veins, which helps to get that blood circulating. 
Uh, metabolizing byproducts, so we want, we need oxygen available to clear out those, uh, the uh, accumulation of metabolic byproducts we spoke about, the lactic acid, the hydronines, and the lactate. We need oxygen to clear those out of the bloodstream, so we want that. And then this is all basically comes down to EPOC, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. We stay active, we keep all of our acute responses above resting levels. More oxygen consumed by the body means we can get rid of those byproducts, we can thermoregulate, all this sort of comes in. But any three, we should understand quite a few benefits of, of an active recovery. Any three would be fine for our three marks. 3C, uh, only two marks here. It basically just says give one positive and one negative of an athlete completing a passive recovery as opposed to that active recovery. 34-0, 39% one mark, 27% two marks. Basically, a positive. The only reason that we're going to do a passive recovery is that it is going to result in a faster replenishment of PC stores. Right? We need passive or at least very, very low intensity to get those PC stores to replete. Uh, so a passive recovery will be a faster PC store replenishment. Right, that's our positive. We're going to use it with shot put, weightlifting, long jump, those events at a maximal couple of seconds, PC depletion, anything much longer, we're going to really prioritize this active recovery. We'd rather worry about all of these things, clear out our byproducts, and then maybe if we need to worry about PC or soil replenishment, we will, but uh, that's only our, real, our positive. And then anything that was helped by an active recovery is not going to be helped by a passive recovery. So the most obvious negative is that we're not going to re uh, remove our byproducts at as quick a rate. So that lactic acid that's accumulating, lactate hydronines, all of that, if we the active recovery helps get rid of that quicker, the passive recovery doesn't. So passive recovery, good for faster replenishment of PC stores, bad for slower removal of those fatiguing byproducts that have accumulated. One mark for each, again, quite straightforward. Uh, that's it for that question. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, if you've got any questions specifically you'd like us to talk through, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.